Hello and welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ Market Site in Times Square. And with us today, Jeffrey Cross, the CEO of Crystal Research. And we're going to be talking specifically about just research. Why companies and funds would want to do research. So let's, let's back up a little bit. Just tell me about your firm. You're the CEO. Yeah. And um, what does Crystal Research do? Crystal Research writes independent research, and it's truly independent research. Most people who out there are doing independent research, as a matter of fact, almost all of them, are paid for saying nice things about someone. Okay. It's sort of like you're getting hired for PR. Yeah. In our case, we are being hired to ensure that what the reader reads is factually mm -hmm. accurate. And who hires you? The company okay. or a fund will hire us to okay. write research on one of the things that they own. Okay. And what we try to do is provide a completely unbiased, objective, factually based report that details the good and the bad and mm. everything that the company has done from intellectual property to the management teams, giving someone a picture where they can understand an accurate snapshot of the company versus a biased snapshot. We'll study all the fundamentals of the company, anything the company has achieved. We'll look at the competition that's out there. We will study the intellectual property. We'll do a detailed listing of the IP so that a fund manager or an individual investor can have all of the facts surrounding the company that they can check and source. All of our graphs, all of our charts, all of our product is sourced so someone can know where a statistic came from. You often will get an analyst, and I was an analyst for three decades, so you'll get an analyst that will point something out that they think the industry is going at 11.2%. Mm. Well, we might, for example, go to the Centers for Disease Control or the American Cancer Society mm. and show you that between 1960 and 2015 or 2016, these are the actual rate of growth for the industry. These mm. are the actual number of deaths. These are the actual occurrences that have taken place. Now, it's not giving you the direct indication for the future, but you certainly can see a pattern and mm -hmm. you can certainly see a trend. And it's not my number. Mm -hmm. It's based on it's something an which is factual. Right, third party. And which is much better than uh -huh. me trying to give you, I did that for a long period of time uh -huh. successfully, uh, but it's, it's much better to give you something which is factually based than something which is biased. And that leads us to another thing of where our research is different. Um, when we first started this firm and went to a major consulting firm and asked them to do a study, they came back to us and said, funds and investors want to know what a company does in an unbiased manner. Mm -hmm. They don't want to know whether the glass is half empty or half full which is a buy or a sell rating, which okay. the analysts then use everything in the report to support that premise. I see. They want to know exactly where the glass is. Mm. Mm -hmm. Once you know exactly where the glass is, as the consulting firm said, then they want to know whether something is overvalued or undervalued. Well, that's for the fund to determine. Mm. If you can give the fund what a company does in a very concise manner with a lot of detail behind it, they then can make the next decision as to whether they think it's overvalued or undervalued, whether they would like to build their own model or whether it's something that they're not interested mm -hmm. in. And I'm just saying the work that an analyst does might find some little nugget, some little piece of information that maybe a fund manager didn't see or didn't have time to find that could make all the difference in the world. I mean, you're talking Wall Street, this could be millions of dollars worth of Absolutely. Information. That we often will find things looking at things from an unbiased objective, uh, unbiased standpoint, um, where we don't have an interest in the investment banking. We don't, we don't, we're not trying to win the investment banking mm. from a client. We're not trying to win the favorable opinion from a client. We're trying to tell the world what this company does. And if this company truly has a great story, then you want us mm. because we will find a lot of things that you will not have been aware of possibly, like you said, golden nuggets, mm -hmm. different ways to look at it based on the experience that we have in the industry and the fact that we're walking into this with an unbiased eye. We're not looking walking into this saying, oh, we want to short this stock or we okay. want to go long this stock. You're not walking in with some kind of predetermined result in mind. You're not at all. Coming Completely in just totally blank slate. Yeah. So you manage uh, about nine billion dollars. Nineteen point two. We oversee nineteen point two. We oversee okay. nineteen point two billion for nine funds for nine through funds. CRA Advisors. And this is entire Crystal Research, or is this just you? It's a separate. It's a separate company. Okay. We've got a, a group of uh, analysts that work with us. My business partner and I, Karen Goldfarb. Um, are the advisors to these nine funds. Uh, at Crystal Research Associates, uh, we've got almost two dozen analysts that work with us. Crystal Research Associates is responsible providing 
coverage on companies, public or private, because there's a lot of great private companies mm. out there. That might be that, for like a venture capital fund or something? Uh, it could be a venture capital fund, or they could be companies that are looking to go public. I see. Mm -hmm. Our research can help them with business partnerships, joint ventures, collaborations. If you're a company out there and you're making purple widgets and you're in the middle of Omaha mm -hmm. and you're private and you've got the best purple widgets on planet Earth, mm -hmm. but nobody knows who you are, sure. and they can't pull things off a of first call like you typically would get off of research channels, mm -hmm. how do you get your exposure? Mm -hmm. You can hire a great PR firm, that's true, but our reports are read around the world. And given all the television and media that we do, we also have a voice by being able to get you in front of people out there so that people can discover you. Mm -hmm. So there's two separate arms. One is CRA advisors, which we're doing advisory work for the funds, who are asking us our opinions, our trained research opinions on companies that are in their portfolio, things that they're looking to buy, and then you've got Crystal Research Associates, which is doing unbiased research, helping fund managers get exposure for companies in their portfolio, also helping companies get exposure to not only try and help them with their market exposure, yeah. but helping them with other people becoming aware of them so that they might do partnerships, joint ventures. It likely can drive your yeah. revenues because people become aware of you. Absolutely. What kind of macro trends are you seeing in healthcare right now? Pharmaceuticals and healthcare in general is still an industry that is not it is not truly matured and consolidated. Hmm. Uh, we've only cured a couple of major diseases in the last 70 years. Uh, healthcare spending is 17% of GDP. Mm -hmm. It's a number that continues to grow. So the trend we're seeing in healthcare is pharmaceutical companies have one giant asset, that's cash. They've got one giant liability, and that's time. They're trying to bridge those two. They're trying to mediate between that. So you're seeing Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer and Novartis amongst the three largest pharmaceutical companies out there. They even have separate funds now. So they have separate investment funds where they're just not doing partnerships with companies, but they're actually investing in the companies. They're actually trying to take right. pieces of technology. Mm -hmm. They're trying to take the widgets that they need to help make their products better or somebody who's looking at something completely different. So the trends we see, we see continuation of mergers and acquisitions. That certainly is going to step up and that's because a lot of times they want to buy the whole company as opposed to just have one particular deal with them. You're going to continue to see innovative biotechnology companies do things differently than pharma companies have. You're going to continue to see um, the managed care companies play an increased yet changing role depending on what the government decides it's going to be. But I think the underlying theme <coughs> here is you have to invest in research and development significantly. Mm -hmm. It's one of the largest industries for investments in research and development. It is your lifeblood of tomorrow. It is your product pipeline. Mm -hmm. So if you're not investing in that, you're cutting yourself short. Well, there's a lot there. So in technology too, it seems like people are more proactive now about their health care. And we're using apps. They are. Um, to count our calories or count our steps or whatever. And, um, and telemedicine, like technology is really becoming a bigger player in healthcare. Telemedicine is absolutely becoming a bigger player. I, I see that trend continuing. There's a lot of individualized, personalized medicine taking place. Uh, for diabetics now, you have the ability to have constant monitoring. You have mm -hmm. more effective diabetes pumps. You have more effective treatments. And very important that you talk about telemedicine because the ability to get information from yourself, from your body, to a healthcare provider so that they can make adjustments or see trends that are happening in your body at different hours of the day when you otherwise could not have been monitored. You can't, unless you're in the hospital, which doesn't make you too productive as a citizen and doesn't have high quality of life, mm -hmm. then you really, it's difficult to track what's going on in your body. But now with the ability of telemedicine, the invention of telemedicine and the advent of it where it's becoming a lot more accurate because of software developments, mm -hmm. because of hardware developments, you have the ability now to monitor and change the course of treatment resulting in better outcomes, which is what you want. If you're, if you're in healthcare, whether you're the government or whether you're the, the care provider, you do not want that person ending up in the hospital. But the reality is adherence to taking medication, adherence to the treatments is the thing that's going to save you the long-term expenses that can be huge. Yes. And it's from not having the right information, not having the right treatment that you end up in that condition. Thank you so much, uh, Jeffrey, for sharing all this from Crystal Research. Thanks, and thank you as well for joining us on Small Cap Nation. And for more information about interesting companies and um, economic research, you can go to smallcapnation.com.